everyone. It is 728 right now and time for Smart Money with our good friend Stephanie Bowles from SA3 Wealth. As uh, we're going to talk about something that uh, for some people uh, you, you might really want to consider and try to make some sense out of what life insurance is all about, Jackie. Absolutely. When mm -hmm. we talk uh, money matters mm -hmm. and using your money in a smart way, maybe you don't always think life insurance, mm -hmm. but it is something that we should all think about and using it in the appropriate way for what we're looking for in life. Yeah, because if you use it properly, it'll protect the wealth that you're trying to build and protect the assets that you've worked so hard to get. As so, a tool yeah. is what you want to yep. use. Okay, it's just so one of the quivers. Yep. All right, so what are we going to uh, dive into here this morning? So talking a little bit about life insurance in general, how to figure out what your needs are and the different types that are out there. You've got term and you've got permanent and then you also have work uh, benefits as well. So. Um, general rules of thumb that are out there, 10 to 20 times your income is always a good starting point if you're not sure how much should you right. be Right, how much am I supposed to be buying? 10 to 20 times, and, and what's the uh, indicator here as to what you want to do with that? So if you give 20 times your income, if you passed away, that would allow you to draw interest off of that or your spouse to draw enough interest off of that to replace your income. So if you make you know, $100,000, know, $100, 20 times your income would be a $2 million policy you draw 5% off of that and you ultimately replace your income for your surviving spouse. So, um, you know, if that's somebody's goal, then that's how you can kind of figure out how much insurance you should need. Okay. So a lot of it's first figuring out what the goal is. Are right. you trying to replace your income? Are you trying to pay off a mortgage? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to figure out how much it's gonna take to raise your kids and get them through college? Mm -hmm. So everybody's goals are a little bit different, right. um, but that's kind of a good starting point, general rule of thumb, 10 to 20 times your income. And saying that, how often should we be going back and looking at this? I know uh, I got my first policy when I had a lot of student debt, and my parents wanted to make sure that right. was covered in case anything should ever happen. Uh, but obviously I'm out of college, I've paid off my student loans. When do we need to go back and look at that and say, okay, now we need to increase or my life goals have changed so I need to look at this again? Usually the earlier you start looking at insurance, the better be for two reasons. One, okay. you, the younger you are, the cheaper it's gonna be. Right. Okay. And two, the healthier you're likely to be mm -hmm. because life insurance is dependent on your health, whether you can get it or not. Mm -hmm. So if a health condition comes up, you may not be able to get life insurance. So it's important to try to plan ahead a little bit. Okay. Um, I do think, you know, in your early 20s is a really good time, especially today. Most people are coming out and starting their careers with debt. Mm -hmm. um, so having enough like you did to, to cover your, you know, final expenses and debts. And, right you know, whatever other goals you may have for gifting to a, a loved one or, or those types of things. And then revisiting that a little bit as you do go along in life, um, your needs will probably change as your career advances. And as long as your health is, is supporting the uh, availability, you can always increase that. Mm -hmm. It'll be a little bit more expensive the longer that you wait to get more. Um, but uh, as your needs change, you can certainly adapt and, and get additional insurance to help cover increases in income, increases in family. Right, mortgages. when you start having families right. and things like that. Tell me the difference between a kind of private and work and how that relates. Yeah, I hear a lot of what I hear um, when I start asking clients, you know, what type of insurance do you have? They'll say, oh, I'm, I'm good, I've got it through work. And, and it's a great supplement, especially if you have two different types you can get through work. You have the kind that's usually provided by your employer as a right. free benefit. Right. And then you can also buy what is called voluntary life mm -hmm. insurance right. or supplemental life insurance. And um, I th they're both better than having absolutely nothing. So mm -hmm. I would support somebody getting that. Um, it, and especially if you have a health concern, that may be the only way that you can get insurance. Um, is through your through employer. Work. So, right, you okay. know, if you do have a health issue that would prevent you from getting it privately, that's a great resource. Um, but if you're a healthy individual, you are paying group rates. So if you're the healthy one in the group, it might be actually more expensive for you to be buying your, in, your supplemental insurance through your employer than it would be privately. So then it would benefit you to look, to look to at the something private. private. Something private. Okay. For two reasons. One, it might be more expensive at work. And two, it's if you have private insurance, it's not attached to your employment anymore. If you leave your job, you don't lose your coverage. Ah, True. good point. So, you know, if it's less expensive and it's yours to keep no matter where you go and it's portable, that makes sense. Yeah, I like that yeah. idea of being portable. Okay, so then let's go back to uh, a, a different other, other things that we should look at uh, when it comes to ins life insurance because there's different categories. Different types of insurance. Yeah, you have permanent and then you have term. Permanent okay. is really what people see when they have like a savings inside their um, insurance. You see whole life, universal, variable are the types of permanent. That's considered they, permanent. Yep. Okay. So it's you pay a higher premium for them. You, um, you'll have some cash value that's saved in there. They're really more designed for long-term insurance. Something you're going to need more than maybe 30 years out 
or something that you know for sure you're gonna wanna gift some, to someone. Mm -hmm. um, they're really great for estate planning uh, purposes. Um, they are going to be the most expensive types of insurance to get. So if you're just trying to cover getting kids raised, mortgages paid off, um, you know, you're in your early 20s, you've got 30, 40 years of income to replace and savings to build up. Term might be a good option for getting a lot of coverage for a low premium. Okay, and that would be in, in the short term. Yeah, right? so you can As buy say, terms so what's the difference yeah. between yeah. permanent and term? So term, you're basically like renting insurance. You're buying renting. it for a period of time. Think okay. of it like when you lease a car, you buy a car. Right. Um, it's the term is basically where you're saying I'm buying insurance for a period of term, usually 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years. So you pay a locked premium. The premium doesn't change. change. Um, it doesn't build cash value. It's basically just it covers the risk if you pass away. It'll have a higher death benefit feature than a permanent would. But and it, the purpose of it is just to suit that purpose for that period. So that but really is like renting. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then if you buy it a 10 year, after that 10 years, it's then done. You, you're done. Your goal better be accomplished by that time. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, or, or you need to buy more insurance. you're going to need to buy insurance. more insurance. You have to rent some more insurance. Right. And but, hope that it's affordable and hope that you're insurable. But the permanent one, oh. as you're paying into it, uh, your cash value grows uh, right. slowly. And so even if you bail out of it, you have a value, correct? If you hold it long enough, If you yes. hold it long yeah, enough. Early okay. years, it's, you've got some ramp up period on permanent insurance. There's mm -hmm. a lot of expenses. Um, that go into permanent insurance that you don't necessarily have in term. Um, there's also what you have to think about is opportunity costs. So permanent has a purpose and it's, it's a good product to use, but you, you look at for the amount of insurance that you're gonna be purchasing with permanent, um, the extra dollars you're allocating towards a permanent policy is going to be more expensive than you're gonna have with buying term. So then you have to look at, okay, if I'm spending you know, $50 and I can get a million dollar term for that versus $50 and I might get $200,000 of permanent, right. then you have to also look at the opportunity cost too of what else could that money be doing and is it going in the right places. Okay. So let's talk about the next steps. If we're talking smart money, using our money the best way we can mm -hmm. for us, what do I need to be doing to make sure I'm making the right decisions? The first thing I would recommend clients do is think about what your goals are. That's a mm -hmm. big part of Set when, I, when we start doing a needs analysis, I'm like, all right, if something happened to you, what would be important for you? What do you want to have happen? Do you want to mm -hmm. pay off your mortgage? Do you want to make sure there's money set aside for your kids for college? Right. So it's just really starting to have those thoughts of, if something happened to me, what would I want for my family and my survivors? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And then second is get do a needs analysis. Have, have a professional help you do a needs analysis to figure out this may be what you think you want, but then when we start really digging and finding out what your needs really are, right. they may not necessarily align. And our, our job is really to make sure that you're protecting your risk as best as possible and using the right products to do it. It could be a combination of I was going to say, you could have them both, right? work. Because you yeah. can have them. You can yeah. have them all. Mixture. Yeah. All of them, yeah. Right, right. Wow. So if you're thinking 10 to 20 times your income, maybe you do 10 to 15 on your own and you use that extra 5% to cover with your work benefits. Work. Oh, sure. Okay. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. you're looking for like the right amount in the right type Ooh. that's going to yeah. go towards your needs analysis. Right. A lot of options. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of puzzle pieces that can go together and, and it can get a little overwhelming for the average Absolutely. person. Absolutely. No <laughs> people who do it all the time, we, we can look at it in five minutes and, and get tell it figured you what, out. what somebody needs. So. That's the benefit of coming to a professional like you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's new mm -hmm. for individuals but we do it all the time and, yeah and it's old hat to you right yeah. as you yeah. said i didn't even know you covered stuff like this you know so, yeah and uh, and it uh, uh, for most independent planners will have a variety of things that they do besides just investment management and planning we do risk management our our uh, firm is independent we don't represent any companies right. so if a client comes in and they need you know insurance of any kind um we don't represent any companies so we first can figure out their needs right and then uh, either just give them the recommendation for them to implement if they have a professional they're already working with, mm -hmm. or if they need help implementing it, we can get the product lined up to you get can them, point them in the right in, direction. into the right thing that's gonna fit their That's needs. good to know, and it go all goes back to us uh, with our money and making mm -hmm. sure we have the right amount to meet our goals that we're setting for ourselves. Right. And using it wisely. Exactly. I love that. Okay, so if we wanna have that conversation, Stephanie, how can we do so with you? Yep, you can contact our office. We'll do a free um, needs analysis and a complimentary review. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And the best website to go to Easiest to check way. that out. Yes. So you can go to sa3wealth.com and our contact information is there. You can schedule a free review. And just that simple. It is that simple. Boom. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. We learned a lot here yeah, today. Yeah, great okay. advice. No question. Thank you. All right. It is 739 right now and we will be right back.